our conference is always the highlight of the year-round program that we run for our museum members. And this year, it's a natural extension from the study days that we have held at Manchester Art Gallery on decolonizing the museum and at the Delaware Pavilion in Bexhill and Sea on feminisms. Since the 1990s, the Contemporary Art Society has augmented its offer to its museum members by offering a program for museum professionals designed to support their knowledge of developments in contemporary art and their familiarity with current debates. As well as investing hundreds of thousands of pounds each year in purchasing work for permanent collections, we make this additional commitment to the museums because we understand them as institutions with a civic role. As such, they need continually to work to be relevant to the committees within which they sit. Rather than simply being a grant-giving body, the Contemporary Art Society takes a role in thought leadership through the research that leads to each acquisition, challenging our museum members to reflect on the way that a new addition to their collection will address and represent their audiences. For example, our VNXX project, through which we purchase important works by female artists, acts as a catalyst for our museum members to analyse the gender balance within their collections. And we were able to use our convening role to bring together 50 museum curators in January this year to view the Speech Acts exhibition curated by the artist Sonia Boyce and to hear about the Black Artists and Modernism project from Dr. Anjali Delal Clayton. The question of diversity and representation runs through all of our activity. In the financial year just ended, of the works placed with museums, 72% were by women artists and 39% by artists of colour. Similarly, the editorial content we produce also reflects our commitment to proper representation of gender, ethnicity and sexuality. While we are proud of our track record, we are just one actor in this arena. And it must be acknowledged that much remains to be done before all our museums feel wholly welcoming to the broadest spectrum of society. We are privileged to have some very distinguished speakers with us today who I am confident will offer very thought-provoking perspectives on the way permanent collections as well as temporary exhibitions can challenge the historical artistic canon. I would like to thank all six speakers and our two moderators for giving their time to exploring this most urgent of debates. I would also like to thank the Courtauld Institute and Ingrid Guio of the Research Forum for being great collaborators on the event, and research fellow Christian Berger for undertaking to write a report on the day which will be available via our website in due course. If you do social media, we would love it if you would use our hashtag, CAS Conference. Um, and finally, I'd like to offer a very big thank you to Martin Cager Smith, who has done so much to shape the conference, and to my own colleague, Vasilios Dupas, who has led with great passion from our side. I wish you all a very, very good day, and now I hand over to Martin to say a little more about the conference itself. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline, and um, welcome everyone to the Courtauld Institute at Vernon Square, Courtauld Mark II. I very much hope there aren't more attendees wandering disconsolately around the sunlit courtyards of um, Somerset House. Um, if they are, I, mean, I hope they will get here um, in due course. Uh, it's, I know this, is a, this annual conference is a, is, a, is a wandering institution. It's great that it's wandered in our direction. I think there's a lot of um, coincidence of interest. Uh, um, it feels an entirely appropriate place. A, a lot of interest, particularly for me, uh, for me because uh, I run here the Masters, the MA program in curating, which um, untypically for curating programs um, looks across history and focuses on museums. I've been doing it for more than 10 years now, um, and in that time, it seems to me the picture has changed enormously. There's been a lot of movement, a lot of change of direction of travel. 10 years ago when I began, and I used to cite examples of, of radical, innovative uh, collection building and use, I tended to resort to the same few examples. Not so anymore. It seems now there are many. 
So the subject of this day's debate is, is not in itself new. I mean, the canon is an, a system of accepted values based on selection and exclusion uh, with its boundaries and its hierarchies and its notions of universality. The canon's been under siege for, for, for decades, for a very long time. It's been questioned a lot. Um, but questioning and systemic change are different things. They move at different speeds. Um, things evolve and change indeed looks different in different places as can experiences of resistance to change. Um, when you depart from a canon, a commonly accepted framework, there's a risk of fragmentation, even perhaps loss of direction. And we must remember that museums are fragile things, um, ever under threat um, as funding and political intrusions and threats um, are, are, are always there. So how then to reach a new consensus? Is a new consensus even possible? Today's agenda is intentionally broad. Um, right from our earliest discussions, we agreed that we wanted to keep it as broad as possible rather than seek a tight focus around a single, uh, a, a single issue. Rather, we decided to uh, invite a range of speakers, directors, curators, academics from uh, a, a big, from London, from Europe, from um, the States. Um, a really broad range, all with their particular distinctive stories to tell based on their own initiatives. Um, but we hope that this will be more than a series of fascinating case studies from which you, the, you, the audience, can, can pick and mix and, and take away what you will. We're hoping that um, there will be a real sense of connection. We're hoping to be able to see where experiences coincide and where agendas may be shared. The day is structured in, in, two, in two halves. Um, the afternoon session will focus on three distinct and radical models for curating um, and exhibitions and display that question categories, conventions, and hierarchies. This morning session, which we're about to embark on now, is based on collections, on questions of what is collected, what is shown, and how, how collections can be expanded and redirected, how they can remain relevant to or more truly representative of their audiences, how to engage with them and address their interests. <laughs> Uniting all these presentations, we believe, we hope, is the question of how we are to understand and bring audiences along with us in understanding what it means to work with a bigger and more diverse art history. So with that, I'd like to pass on to my colleague, Vasilios Dupas, who is going to introduce the speakers for this morning. And I shall return to discuss with them soon. Vasilios. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Um, I'm Vasilios Dupas. I'm the Curator of Programs at the Contemporary Art Society. I just wanted to say two practical things. Um, the first thing is that um, there are toilets here and here. Um, the second is that you all have uh, a handout. At the back of the handout there is an evaluation form. So we kindly ask you to fill it in, um, possibly during the lunch break, and return it either to me or to one of my colleagues. Now, let's move on with um, the speakers. Uh, we will have three presentations. The first presentation is by Christopher Bedford. He is the director of the Baltimore Museum of Art, and he was the curator of the American Pavilion in the last Venice Biennale. Um, then we will hear from Sue King Lee, who is the senior curator at Tate Modern, um, and she is also in the... Um, Asia Pacific Research Group at Tate. Um, she will talk about <coughs> the transnational um, experience of Tate and indigenous, in particular indigenous art as a decolonizing project. Um, the last um, uh, speaker will be Hilke Wagner, who is the director of Albertinum, and she will talk about the situation in um, her country. So she will bring the question to a local context. Thank you, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> 